<clears throat> Testing audio. <clears throat> we are under attack. Our nation is under attack from bird scooters. The war on bird scooters tonight at 11 or um, now it's now. This is a YouTube video. It just sounded cool to say at 11 because you know, you, you get it. <laughs> One week after bird scooters land in Milwaukee, the city takes legal action to get rid of the electric ride. If you're unaware what bird scooters are, they're the most popular brand of electric scooters. They're in a lot of major cities and college campuses and they work a lot like Uber or Lyft does. Here's uh, me and my friend Gus Johnson unlocking one this morning. Unfortunately, I can't use the audio for this clip because a guy was using a leaf blower right next to us. So when you wanna use an app like Bird, what you do is you take a picture of your driver's license to prove that you can legally ride it. Then you enter in your credit card info, you scan the QR code on the scooter, so then it unlocks it with your phone. It's now kinda tied to your phone and when you want to end the ride you have the option to either pause it so you know you could go in and grab a coffee and use the same scooter when you get out or you can completely end the ride and pay for it right there. I'm not sure about the payment structures on other apps but I know for Bird it's a dollar to unlock and then 15 cents per minute as you ride. So compared to things like Uber or Lyft, it's a pretty cheap way to get around. Now Bird is just the most popular company. There are so many of these companies popping up out of nowhere. The big two are Bird and Lime, but there are other ones like Lyft, Spin, Jump. Now before we get into everything, I have to admit that I have a bias for these scooters. There's nothing I love more than scooting around with my boys across the city. Just me on a scoot, a boy right here, a boy right here, maybe a boy in the back, just my boys riding around. When I was a kid, some friends had electric scooters and I always wanted one, but then I also thought if I owned one, I would be stressed out about breaking it all the time. And these apps kind of remove that stress. You get to just jump on an electric scooter and ride it around as long as you want until the battery dies. But what comes with the joy I get from riding on these scooters is also a level of guilt. And that's because these companies and the scooters that they rent out are very controversial. So let's dive into that a little bit and start talking about why these scooters can be very bad. We're gonna start off with this Vice News video that came out in May of 2018 about scooters flooding into San Francisco. San Francisco was the site of an invasion last month. A fleet of app-based electric scooters suddenly arrived on almost every street and sidewalk. The three companies that operate them attended no hearings and received no permission from city officials before they dumped their products on the street. So here's where it starts to be conflicting for me. I love these things. They're so much fun with my friends. But last year, these companies just all together decided, you know what? Fuck San Francisco. Let's just, without asking, flood the entire city with scooters. You can't just go to a city and without asking anyone, drop off thousands of scooters overnight. I almost got hit three times. Obviously, they don't belong in sidewalks, but <laughs> that's where they are. <laughs> One wrong turn and I can be on my back. <laughs> so, oh, no. They shouldn't be going on the sidewalks and they shouldn't be going so fast. Get rid of it. Now, I totally understand where these people are coming from. They seem like they've lived in San Francisco for years. They have no interest in riding electric scooters. And now there are just people zooming on the sidewalks out of nowhere as they're trying to walk. I have a lot of fun with these things, but they go up to like 17 miles an hour on the sidewalk. If you have a kid or a dog or just care about your own well-being and now there are people zooming almost 20 miles per hour on the sidewalk next to you, you're gonna be a little pissed. But they're fun and I, I like them because they're fun though. So what's right here? People's safety or me having a lot of fun? I don't know, let's dive more into it. Companies have cute names like Bird, Lime, and Spin and CEOs like this man, Travis Vanderzan. Travis was the COO of Lyft and then a VP at Uber, a company known for pissing off city officials in the interest of unregulated ride sharing. So really when you think about it, the CEO of Bird right now is just a guy that keeps entering different cities and just going, 
Fuck your laws. I don't really care. What are you gonna do? Stop Lyft? That's what we'll see in a little bit is that there's pros and cons to these ride sharing apps and services, but they never ask the city. So we're kind of in this weird period right now where a bunch of cities in the United States are trying to deal with the fact that a lot of their citizens are using these services, but they're totally unregulated. Spin is another company in the electric scooter space. We're kind of known as a company that's been going out there and innovating on the regulatory side um, and actually helping cities craft these solutions. And, and our goal here in San Francisco is to come to a, a permit system as soon as we can. Can so you understand how the phrase innovating on the regulatory side could uh, to regulators be seen as just breaking the law? I mean, that's one, I mean, bringing, I guess, uh, putting my, my lawyer hat on, I think that it, it's a process. <laughs> This guy is the co-founder of one of the leading electric scooter companies, and he used the phrase innovative on the regulatory side. Like the journalist from Vice said, that just means breaking the law. You don't innovate on regulations unless you try and get the regulations changed. You don't just say fuck you to them. And his answer was, if I put my lawyer hat on, it's a process. What does that even mean, dude? So not even the CEOs of these companies have really a direct response to why they're breaking the law and what they should do. They're just kind of doing it. But there are positives to these scooters. We'll get to those a little later, but first I wanna finish this Vice video. In April, the city attorney issued cease and desist orders to all the scooter companies, claiming that customers were violating the law by not wearing helmets, blocking sidewalks and access ramps, and not having valid driver's licenses. Now this is very important because when you think about it, people riding electric scooters that go 15, 16, 17 miles an hour shouldn't be on the sidewalk. If bikes aren't legally allowed there and should be in the bike lane, then they shouldn't be on the sidewalk either. But what am I gonna do? Put a helmet on and ride in the bike lane when I could not do that? Again, I think what the law isn't realizing is that I like to have fun. I can't ride with the boys in the bike lane. What am I gonna be, two feet to the left of where I was originally riding the scooter? That's insane. But also there aren't bike lanes everywhere. So then are they not allowed on the sidewalk? Do you ride them in the street? What do you do with them then? Is it more important to be competitive than it is to obey what the cities are telling you to do? We don't think we were breaking any laws. We're supportive of regulations. And what we've said is whatever the city of San Francisco comes up with for regulation, Bird will absolutely comply with that. So the Bird CEO says they're not breaking any laws there, which according to the city of San Francisco is wrong. That's not true. But they are saying they're willing to follow any laws that the city comes up with. So here's where I'm conflicted again. They flooded the cities with these scooters and are like, fuck you, tell us what to do with these things. And now cities have to scramble to make up regulations for it. And they will follow those, which is kind of nice, but holy shit, we just threw those on the cities right away. Lime declined to be interviewed for our story and none of the companies would tell us how many scooters are actually on the streets. None of the companies would announce how many scooters they put in these areas. Don't you find that a little weird? There's so many in Los Angeles here that I can't even try to count them and they won't tell the city how many scooters they just dumped there? That's very bizarre. And they do have a cadre of loyal enthusiasts. Ducks fly together. <laughs> Once you get on there and you start the wind in your hair, it's pretty fun. Fuck yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting for a representation of some boys scooting around and we finally got some. Let's hear what a couple of boys have to say. Yeah, I usually just get some dirty looks. You know, either there's girls checking you out or there's, you know, the, the angry elderly couple that's saying, get off my streets. Those are not the two possibilities for somebody staring at you on a scooter. What girl? I've ridden these things around everywhere and no girl is like, is that a bird scooter? One thing I will say though, is that people do look annoyed a lot of the time when you're zooming past them and I can't blame them. I would hate me too. So I completely understand it. And maybe these guys weren't the best representation for the boys because there are better things to talk about of what these scooters do other than girls checking you out or wind being in your hair. Do you know better of what a city needs for transportation than the city itself does? No, I don't think we know better than what they know, but I, I think there's always new innovations happening that maybe cities haven't thought about yet, or we have something new and unique that's never been tried before, and what's the best way to work with cities to actually pilot that and see if it works and then figure out how to make sure it's successful when we enter a market. So the way he ended that is actually a great segue to the next part of the video. Because the truth of the matter is these can be very annoying, but if regulated, they can do a lot of good as well. So let's get to that part. 
So aside from all the good experiences I've had, you know, with the boys, these scooters actually do have a lot of pros to them. One of the big positives to these things is traffic. Let's say it's 5 p.m., middle of rush hour on a Wednesday, and I wanna go to the grocery store, but it's too far to walk. Now, I have a car back in Chicago, but I don't have one here, partially because I share it with my brother, and also I don't wanna deal with one or drive in Los Angeles. So before the scooters, I had two options. I could call a friend, to come and pick me up and add another car to traffic, or I could call an Uber or Lyft, which would also add another car to traffic. Now with the scooters, I can just zoom past everyone in rush hour as they're stopped on my way to the grocery store, and I can ride there pretty fast. And the thing is, somewhere like LA, it's really significant to have less drivers on the road during rush hour. It's fucking terrible here. So anything that could ease up traffic a little bit seems like a good thing. But here's also the problem with traffic that we'll get into a little bit later, people are not good at driving or riding anything, generally. So many people on the road, I think we all know, are idiots. You might be an idiot on the road, and you might know that, and it's okay, but it's also not. Stop being so fucking stupid. Use your goddamn signal. But most people you can't trust to obey the correct laws on bird scooters. If you live in a city or area with these, you know that they're always flying out into the road when the lights are red, they're bumping into people, they're hitting people, they're wiping out themselves. So while it could be good for traffic, it's also bad for traffic as well to have collisions all the time and people hitting people on bird scooters because they can't follow the law. And then there's the environmental aspect. The fact that came up in a lot of these articles is that 40% of car rides are less than two miles long. So ideally, if there's a scooter everywhere, you could cut out 40% of car rides and not have the emissions happen. But then there's also the worry of recyclability of these scooters. They could just end up in landfills. So they're not all bad. Obviously, they're flooding into these cities and they're not following regulations, but they could be good for the environment and for people's pockets. But a lot of people are not happy about it. Here, scooters are thrown off rooftops. <laughs> Holy shit! Can you just do that? Can you just, with no consequences, throw one of these fucking things off a building? Others are tossed into the trash. And, oh shit, even a baby gets in on the act. Okay, um, don't do that. If you don't like birds, don't use your baby as a way to knock them down. It's not really harmful, but it's just the principle of it. Don't fucking knock your baby's stroller into a bird scooter because you hate it so much. I don't like people taking pictures of their food when I'm out with them, but I don't take a fucking baby and scramble up their meal with it. Your baby's not a prop to get rid of things that are annoying. Traffic rules are often ignored. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, Here's Jim Murray. This is what I'm talking about. Dumb people ride that. Did you see how much time this guy had to just swerve out of the way? But he said, excuse me, excuse me, and then hit the girl. It's not that I don't think bird scooters should go away. It's just I only want to be the one that rides them because I don't trust any of you. The sticker reads, pardon the language, turd. The vigilante doesn't want his face shown on camera. It's gotten to a point where I, I felt like I needed to react to it. Okay, so this guy's kind of a legend. I've seen these turd scooters before around LA and they're hilarious. He's not harming them, he's not breaking the scooters, just in a form of protest. He even, with their own logo, changed it. That's fine, we should leave those on. Turd is hilarious. And the destruction doesn't stop at that inside edition for it. There's an Instagram account called Bird Graveyard with 80,000 followers that's just an account of people breaking these fucking things. Like, that's just a bunch of people smashing a company's property, but they also don't follow regulations. So who's in the wrong here? Because they're bad in some ways and good in the others. Are these people justified to protest them? Probably, but throwing them off buildings and slamming them into the ground. You could also break, you know, city property or private property of like a small business. What if somebody walked out into one of those areas when you're throwing a bird scooter down and they got hit in the fucking head with a bird scooter? So I get it, the birds are kind of annoying, but that doesn't give you the right to steal the property of a company and burn a bunch of rubber and plastic into the environment for a cool Instagram video. Go fuck yourself if you do that. There are so many 
videos of people setting these things on fire. And what do you think happens to them if you personally take them and set them on fire? I'll look into it more, but I guarantee you that lime and bird and spin have at least a little bit more of an efficient way of recycling or getting rid of these things than you burning it to a crisp and then just putting it out with your garbage. The people burning these don't realize that they're actually worse maybe than the companies that are putting the scooters out there. So I just found a local news report on the people who run bird graveyards. So here it is. We met with one of the guys who runs the account in Venice and he wants to stay anonymous. I mean, there's so many ways that you can destroy it. We've seen some creative ones. There's a clip where some, it looks like they had to use gasoline or something because the whole thing's torched. It seems like the guy from bird graveyard doesn't even think about destroying them. He just posts them because he's annoyed of them. So he actively encourages these people to burn their scooters and he didn't even think about what the issues could be with that. There's even a post on Bird Graveyard about how sad it is that all of these limes are gonna get thrown in the ocean. And I haven't seen any report that they get thrown in the ocean, but he's encouraging people to what? burn them into the environment? Those are so contradictory to one another. So when you total it up, you know, the pros are that it's cheap, it's fun, it's good for the environment, possibly, depending on how they dispose of these things. It's good for traffic, it's fun. But the cons are that they don't follow any regulation. They're not telling us how many birds go there. It's dangerous. It's just such a mixed bag that uh, I don't really know the answer. But it seems like we could maybe get one clear answer out of this. You should be riding bird scooters in the bike lane with a helmet. Cities should regulate that and a lot of the scooter companies should follow those regulations. So in conclusion, you know, we'll, we'll put helmets on, we'll follow the regulation, we'll go in the bike lane. But that's not as fun though. All right, here we go. Thank you to Justin, Madison, Derek, Carrie, Business Vulture, Bernard, Josie, Sophia, Damien, Allie, Gabrielle, Dom, Child of Burback, Belle, Kenzie, Amico, Jackie, Lindsay, Aurora, Diana, Cold Brewskis, Megan, Kiara, Miranda, Reese, Amanda, Nichibon, Haley, Kat, Brian, Jasmine, Josie, Slashmasta, Dave and Janet, and Cody. Thank you guys so much.